Welcome back to the channel, it's Andy and FM24 is out right now and if you're looking for something to do on the new game, maybe a new challenge or just a general save idea, that's what I'm here for today. I've got 24 save ideas for Football Manager 2024. And all of these saves can be done on the default game as well with no editor databases or anything like that required. There are several other ideas that do require additional databases and editors and things, which, you know, I could do a separate video for that if you're interested. But these 24 ideas are all doable on the main game. And number one is very simple, just manage the team you support. And this is definitely recommended if you are brand new to Football Manager. If you've never played the game before, the best thing to do would be to go for a big team or a team that you support. My very first Football Manager save back on FM 2007 was with Liverpool, and that was because I'd never played the game before. So going in with a team that I at least have prior knowledge of, is helpful when you're trying to learn the game and that's why a lot of creators for their early access saves or their beta saves will go for a big team like a large premier league side because you know they want that prior knowledge of the team because they're trying to learn the brand new game so in my case that would be liverpool but yes i would say that if you're trying to learn football manager go for the team you support because you know you have that knowledge of that team already so that's quite an easy number one. Let's jump ahead to number two, and it's the non-league new boys. And this is Tyneside Outfit South Shields FC, who are playing in the sixth tier for the first time since the previous club folded in 1973. They won a playoff tight against Whitby Town to win promotion to the National League North. And the idea here is you're starting in the lowest playable league in England. It's a road to glory. Can you get South Shields from the bottom to the top? You can see they're managed by Julio Ark. They've also got former Premier League Golden Boot winner Kevin Phillips as a previous manager. They are actually expected to get a good finish in the top half despite being promoted from the tier below. But while South Shields, of course, are in the league for the first time, uh, you've also got Townworth that have come up from the league below. And you've also got Warrington Town in the National League North. In the National League South, you've got Promoties Truro City in the Southwest, and you can have some really long journeys. If you can get promoted to the National League, imagine some of those trips you take up to the north of England. Some of those journeys would be immense. Western Supermare also in the National League South. And then we've got Averley as well, media prediction of 22nd place. You could go for Dover Athletic, who did remain in the National League South for the past season, but they're expected to finish rock bottom of the lowest tier you can play in, so that could be a fun challenge. Start with the on paper, worst side in England you can play as and get them to the top. So loads of non-league ideas. Number three is the Premier League underdogs. We're talking about Luton Town. And Luton are playing in the Premier League in 2023 for the first time after their penalties win over Coventry City in the playoff final. And just a decade ago, Luton were non-league. You know, financial trouble saw them drop out of the Football League and they might be possibly the biggest ever underdogs in Premier League history. You know, with the wage bill, Probably less than some big Premier League clubs spend in a week. A squad that's worth probably about £20 million you're looking at. Just staying in the Premier League with Luton would be a huge achievement. So can you keep them up first of all? And can you make them an established Premier League club? Get them some trophies and just push them up the league table. This is what I mean about big underdogs. They are 1,000 to 1 to win the Premier League. And fellow promoters Burnley and Sheffield United are also expected to go straight back down again. So you could take on any one of those promoted clubs and try and keep them in the Premier League. Sheffield United, as of recording this, have only just got their first win in the Premier League. So that's going to be a big challenge. And then you've got Burnley as well. You know, you've got some options there. But you could go for anybody in this Premier League. You know, again, if you support one of the big sides or if you're playing the game for the first time, go for one of those big clubs as well. We'll stay in England for a little bit, but we will be going abroad. Do not worry about that. Let's go to number four. Uh, and let's go for back to back. So Wrexham and Notts County both won promotion to the Football League after dominating the National League last season. They amassed 218 points between the two clubs and they're performing well in League 2 as well. Looking at the League 2 table, currently sitting in second and third place Notts County and Wrexham respectively behind Stockport County. But, you know, looking like they're going for back to back promotions here and that's what you've got to try and aim for. So Wrexham are famously owned by actors Rob McElhenney and Ryan Reynolds, uh, one of the four Welsh clubs playing in the English Football League alongside Cardiff, Swansea and Newport County. Meanwhile you've got Notts County, the oldest association football club in the world. They predate the FA, that's how old they are and uh, you know they were almost in the first Premier League season, the inaugural season. Back in 1992 they were relegated under Neil Warnock and just missed out on it and you know they've been a former top tier side 
But back in 2019, for the first time, they fell out of the Football League. They've only just come back up. So your challenge with those two clubs, pick up where they've left off, get back-to-back -back promotions, rocket them up the English pyramid. One more in England for now, and then we will jump abroad, and it's a good old English rebuild. And there are several clubs that you can choose from uh, to do a good old rebuilding save. You know, you've got founding Football League members Bolton Wanderers, they haven't been in the Premier League since 2012, of course, massive financial troubles, almost ceased to exist as a football club entirely, fell down to League Two and are back up in League One. And, you know, they're starting to get, you know, back into things again. Can you grab hold of them? Can you get them back to the Premier League? Can you win some trophies along the way? They did win the Football League trophy last season. So try and win that again, maybe. And just, yeah, keep them going. And you've also got 2013 FA Cup winners Wigan Athletic also in League One. They had a good spell in the Premier League. Wigan um, promoted in 2005 and then relegated the year they won the FA Cup in 2013. Uh, but they were yo-yoing between the Championship and League One for quite a while. They were relegated from the Championship last season and start with a deduction, I think, of eight points. So there's a challenge in itself with that points deduction. But Wigan, another opportunity for one of those rebuilds. You've also got, you know, the classic Phoenix Club, AFC Wimbledon, um, founded uh, by the supporters of the original Wimbledon Football Club, the Crazy Gang, before their relocation to Milton Keynes. So after several promotions in the noughties, it looks like they have kind of plateaued and they're stuck around League 1, League 2. So can you bring them up to the Premier League with a brand new Crazy Gang? And then in the National League, you've got other possibilities. Scunthorpe United, now a non-league club after back-to-back -back relegations. They were a former championship side in the noughties in the early 2010s. Now they're a non-league side they're in the lowest playable league can you bring them back up and then lastly you've got Oldham Athletic in the National League they're on the top step of non-league football uh, but they are the very first former Premier League team to fall out of the top four divisions so you can bring one of these clubs back to the Premier League and return them to former glory Oldham the last one of those ones you know the former Premier League side now non-league can you get them back to the top I think we've been in England for long enough so let's go abroad number six we're going to Spain's oldest football club and that is Recreativo de Huelva, the oldest football club in Spain, yet they find themselves in the third tier, and that's after a combination of financial trouble and a league restructure, saw them double relegated all the way down to the fifth tier in 2021. They are a former La Liga side, they spent a few years there in the noughties before relegation in 2009. So the challenge there brings Spades the oldest football club back to the top. You know, can you get them playing alongside Sevilla once again? These two sides are the oldest in Spain and played Spain's very first football match back in 1890. So there's your challenge for Spain, take the oldest club in the country, get them back to La Liga and just see how far you can take them. So there you go, rebuild Recreativo. We've had lots of English rebuilds, number seven, it's a French rebuild. In May of 2022, shocking scenes took place as fans stormed the pitch at the start at Geoffrey Guichard. Their beloved Saint-Étienne had been relegated from Ligue 1 for the first time since 2004 and we'd be playing in Ligue 2. Saint-Étienne, or Le Verts, their nickname, have won 10 Ligue 1 titles, just one fewer than Giants Paris Saint-Germain. They've also achieved several other domestic trophies, even reaching a European Cup final back in 1976. And this club's been graced by legends such as Michel Platini and Laurent Blanc, uh, they've had young prospects in the past like Kurt Zuma, uh, Dimitri Payet, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And now since Etienne are in the second tier, they've got to fight to get back to the top flight. And you, can you get them back to the top and then can you catch PSG? There's the big challenge there. PSG have just overtaken Saint-Etienne for most league on titles. You've got to get that record back and beat PSG to the record number of titles once again. Off to Germany now for number eight, and it's an East German resurgence. And our friends of the channel will remember my BFC Dynamo save back on FM19, an East German football club that won 10 consecutive titles in what was then the German Democratic Republic. But since the reunification of Germany in 1990 and 1991, these Eastern clubs have struggled to compete with their Western counterparts. Looking at this season in the Bundesliga, there's two clubs from the former East Germany, that is RB Leipzig and Union Berlin. Hertha Berlin are from the western part of Berlin, and they got relegated, but they are not part of East Germany, they are from the western section of Berlin. So I guess if you're looking for an easier version of the safe take charge of RB Leipzig, they're in the best position of these clubs. They've never won the Bundesliga, but in the past five seasons, they've never finished outside the top four. Union Berlin were promoted in 2019 and they are really on the rise and they are in the Champions League this season for the first time so you can take charge of them if you want to stay in the Bundesliga but have maybe a bit more of a challenge. But if you do want to go for a bit more of a challenge you can go down to the Zweite Bundesliga. There you can find Hertha but like I said they don't count. They're from the western part of Berlin. You've got Hansa Rostock in the Zweite Bundesliga and they actually were in the top flight of Germany 
and that's only because they had a high finish in the very last DDR Oberliga season that was the last season of the East German League. The other side from East Germany in the second tier are FC Magdeburg and they've actually won a European trophy they actually won the Cup Winners Cup back in 1974 so they've got some European pedigree as well. And for a really big challenge you can go down to the third tier. Dynamo Dresden are strong favourites to win promotion from the Dreiter Bundesliga. So if you want a quick promotion to the second tier, they're your option. Dynamo Dresden uh, did win many Eastern German titles, not quite as many as BFC Dynamo, but they're probably one of the more favoured clubs because Dynamo uh, went about it in very shady ways, as you might have seen if you watched uh, my save about how they went about getting the best players. It was an absolute mess. But Dynamo Dresden, uh, much more popular. And you could also go for Erzgeberg, they're from East Germany, they're in the third division, they're kind of expected to finish mid-table. And then you've got Hallescher FC, also in the third tier, um, they're really prediction of 12, so you've got three sides in the third tier from East Germany as well. You could say any one of those, try and get them to the top and start your own East German resurgence. And you could also, you know, like I said at the start, get custom databases and manage BSC Dynamo in the fourth tier because they're still there. Let's leave Germany. Let's take a short trip to the Netherlands for save number nine. What's happening to Ajax? Because while I was putting together the idea for this video, Ajax actually found themselves bottom of the Eredivisie. Yes, bottom of the Eredivisie. At the time of recording, they are in 15th place. After nine games, they have just two wins and they've lost five games and have just eight points. And Ajax are the most successful club in the Netherlands and one of the most world recognized clubs of the 20th century. They won four European Cups. But things haven't quite been going right since the departure of Eric Ten Hag to Manchester United. Uh, you have Mark Overmars removed as director of football as well, kind of a bit of controversy around that. And the recruitment strategy at Ajax has become very, very poor. You know, Ajax have got a bit of a reputation as a selling club. You know, they, they build these players up and they really improve these players but then they will always move them on to other clubs and their recruitment hasn't quite been as good. They've got some decent players, but, you know, they're not quite getting, you know, the talent they used to. And key players have moved on from the club as well. The current squad just seems very disjointed. The football's not there. And this club just four years ago were on the precipice of the Champions League final, literally seconds away before Lucas Moura uh, put Spurs in there. And now they find themselves at the wrong end of the Dutch league. So... Can you fix this mess in Amsterdam? That's the challenge there for Ajax. Just sort them out. We've got an interesting one for number 10. It's a new playable nation. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about a brand new playable league system in Asia in FM24, but we will get to that a bit later. What might have slipped under the radar is there's actually a second playable nation in the newest game. And that is Gibraltar. Because the British territory off the coast of Spain was only previously playable via a Steam Workshop download, but now they're part of the default game for the first time. Founded in 2019, the Gibraltar Football League contains 11 teams and all matches are played at the 5,000 capacity Victoria Stadium. Now the only side that have won this league are the Lincoln Red Imps, who were the first Gibraltarian side to qualify for a European group stage. They got to the Conference League uh, back a couple of years ago. But it's no fun if you just walk the Gibraltarian League, you're on a bit of a challenge, don't you? I managed Europa FC before on a journeyman when I moved from non-league England to Gibraltar, so Europa FC is a side that I've managed before and it was a lot of fun. We've also got Bruno's Magpies named after a bar where the club's founders actually drank together. Manchester 62 FC are named after Man United, that was with the blessing of Sir Matt Busby. And then you've got Mons Calpi, which took its name from the Roman name for the Rock of Gibraltar, which is you know, easily the most notable landmark on the island. So I guess with these clubs, you can stop the run of Lincoln Red Imps and have a different Gibraltarian side win the league and then become the first Gibraltarian club to qualify, maybe for the Champions League proper. Lincoln Red Imps have been in the Europa Conference League. Can you become the first club from Gibraltar to get into the Champions League proper? So you've got a brand new playable nation in Gibraltar. We'll get to the other one a bit later. But number 11, it's a northern extremity. We're off to Scandinavia specifically. We're off to the northernmost top flight football club in the world. This is Tromsø. Located in the Arctic Circle in northern Norway, Tromsø have been in the Elite Syrian since 2021. They've been runners up on two occasions, most recently in 2011. So they have been in European football before. So the challenge with Tromsø, or you could also do this with uh, Buda Glimt, another side in northern Norway, uh, challenge the dominance of the southern Norway clubs and take the Norwegian title to the Arctic Circle. And then beyond that, you've got the added challenge of being the first Scandinavian club to win the Champions League, because no club has ever done it. 
Now, FM23, of course, I had my save with IF Jutteberg, who won two UEFA Cups in the 1980s, but no Nordic team has ever won UEFA's top prize. So that will be the end game of the Tromsø or Bulliglim save, become the first Nor Nordic or Scandinavian side to win the Champions League. There you go. We'll go from one of the most northern clubs in Europe to one in the extreme west. Number 12 is an Azores adventure. Club Deportivo Santa Clara play in the second tier of Portugal after relegation from the Primera Liga in 2023. Now they're in the Portuguese league, but their games are played almost 900 miles west of the Portuguese mainland in the Azores. The Azores are almost 900 miles west of Lisbon and they're also around 1200 miles southeast of Newfoundland, Canada. So it's just as far from Portugal as it is from the Americas. So with these other Portuguese clubs facing the round trip to the North Atlantic, uh, can you get Santa Clara back to the top flight first of all, and then can you get them into Europe? They've got the highest finish in the Portuguese top flight of 6th place, and that sure got them into the Conference League in 2021. Uh, they're now been relegated, but of course they just fell short of those groups. So get them into the Champions League, get them into Europe proper. That's what we're going to do, is bring the Portuguese title and then the European title to the Atlantic Ocean. Been north, we've been west, let's go east. Number 13, Eastern European winners. Because only two football clubs from Eastern Europe have ever won UEFA's biggest prize, the European Cup. In 1991, Red Star Belgrade of the former Yugoslavia defeated Marseille on penalties. And five years earlier, Stava Bucharest became the first, shocking Barcelona in a penalty shootout themselves. Now, of course, Red Star remained the biggest club in Serbia or in the Balkan region, so that would be an easier version of this save. But, you know, Stava are in the second tier. FCSB are in the first tier. You know, Stowers history has been documented on this channel before with my say back on FM21. You know, the legal dispute between FC and Stower uh, has been ongoing over the owners of the club's history, the owners of the club's honours. So Stower are in Romania's second division and they finished second place in that division. So they came close to a promotion to the top flight. They are in that league with city rivals Dinamo Bucharest. So you've got to get their bragging rights in that eternal derby. Get Stower back to the top flight. Get them into European football and relive the 1986 European Cup final. I think we should leave Europe for a bit. So let's go to number 14, MLS newbies. We'll go across the pond to the United States of America. Now, yes, the MLS has a complicated league. I've done it before on the channel. I didn't like it and it didn't do very well. But if you want to have a crack at it, then have a crack at it. And you know what? You can manage the league's newest expansion. That is St. Louis City SC. Established in 2019, Missouri's second MLS club after Sporting Kansas City entered the league for the first time this year. And they actually finished top of the Western Conference in real life, losing just five matches. At the time of recording, they're in the MLS Cup playoffs, so they're against Sporting Kansas City, and the first leg ended with a 4-1 loss. If you want to learn MLS, you could go for any club. You could go for Lionel Messi's Inter Miami. You could go for a newer club in Charlotte or Nashville or Austin in the Western Conference. You know, lots of possibilities in the MLS if you want a new club like St. Louis or just an established club. But the idea is try and get the hang of the rules and regulations in the MLS, take charge of whichever club you want, but you could go for the new boys of St. Louis. That's who I'd go for. Try and take them all away. Bit of a restriction on this save, number 15, it's the Cantera policy. Now, a homegrown challenge is always a good challenge for FM. You only rely on the players that come through your youth academy and the players that only play for the country you're managing in. That's always a fun challenge on FM. Some clubs in real life do not allow foreign players to play for their clubs. An athletic club in Bilbao, Spain, have implemented this since 1912. They only bring in players from the autonomous Basque country through their youth ranks, and they only sign Basque players from other clubs. But, you know, despite this restriction, Atletico are a successful club. They've won eight La Liga titles, although they haven't played in Europe since 2018. So if you want to have a go at this, manage Bilbao, you can only sign Basque players and you can only promote and, and produce the players from the Basque country that come through your youth intake. But there are other clubs that do this as well over in Mexico. This Cantera rules also used by Club Deportivo Guadalajara, also known as Chivas. They only rely on homegrown players, only have Mexican players playing for them, but that hasn't stopped them producing some of the nation's best players, Carlos Vela, uh, Javier Hernandez. They've won several titles in Mexico, Chivas. They've even won the CONCACAF Champions League, which is the top prize in North America. So yeah, despite these restrictions, clubs like Bilbao and Guadalajara still produce great players and are still established sides in the league and, and former champions in their league as well. So if you want clubs that genuinely use this Cantera policy, Bilbao and Guadalajara are the way to go, but you could do this with any club. You could go for uh, Paris FC, try and beat PSG, but only use French players. You could even go back to the Wrexham idea from earlier and only use Welsh players 
and see how far you can take them only using Welsh players in the English league. So many options with a homegrown challenge. You know, the possibilities are endless. And we just talked about England and Wales once again. Should we talk about Scotland? Let's talk about Scotland. Number 16 is toppling the old firm. Because if we have a look at the past winners in the Scottish League, Celtic and Rangers, Celtic and Rangers. 1985 was the last time that a club other than Celtic and Rangers won top flight in Scotland. And with that 40th anniversary fast approaching, you need to topple the old firm and you need to win the SPL. Now the side that did that in 1984-85 was Aberdeen FC and Alex Ferguson and they're often seen as you know the best of the rest in Scotland you know apart from Celtic and Rangers Aberdeen are the side that are kind of generally third and they probably have the strongest chance of breaking the 40-year hoodoo of no side other than Celtic and Rangers winning. Although looking at the media prediction Aberdeen predicted to finish fourth. You've got two Edinburgh clubs either side of them. Can you bring the SPL title to Edinburgh? Maybe take charge of Hearts or Hibernian. You could even, you could even take it to Ross County. Take the uh, Scottish Premier League title to the Highlands. While we're still in the UK, we'll go back to England just very briefly. Uh, number 17, Chelsea. It's your world. Because there's a new feature in FM24. If we were to start a new career with Chelsea, we can have a look at this screen here. You've got the game mode, which you can choose. Now you've got three models on which you can, you know, set up your career. You've got the third option, which is your world. You will always start on the 3rd of July, 2023. This is if you take charge of Chelsea. Club squads and budget will be accurate as of the start of the season with no real life transfers reflected after that date. So this is an entirely different reality. You can completely redo Chelsea's transfer window. And you can do this with any club. The Your World mode allows you to essentially have another go at your club's transfer window. And with Todd Burley's war chest at Chelsea, you can use that transfer budget and build up your own squad essentially from the ground up. You know, Todd Burley's forked out over a billion pounds in the transfer market to create a team that, you know, in the future will be a world beater. But right now, it's just not happening. It's very much a work in progress, but... Despite this, time doesn't seem to be on the side of managers. You know, Thomas Tuchel and Graham Potter have both been axed during um, the Bowley regime, if you want to call it that. So the challenge with Chelsea, have another go at their transfer window, create your own squad, and bring success to the club before they sack you, because it doesn't seem like Todd's a very patient person. Now, we've been mainly in Europe in this video. We had a brief stint over in the Americas with the MLS and with Mexico. But number 18 is an African club in Europe. So we've covered Spain's third division in this video already with Recreativo de Huelva, but what if I told you there were two clubs in that division that were actually on the main continent of Africa? Well, there are. Ceuta and Melilla are autonomous cities of Spain that lie on the north coast of Africa, bordering Morocco. Now, because you've got the Canary Islands, which are technically part of Africa, they're around 60 miles west of Morocco, uh, but you have two clubs here which are actually on the mainland of Africa. Now, Theuta are in the first division B in the Spanish leagues. They're predicted to finish eighth place. Melilla are in the same league, but they're predicted to finish in 16th. So both sides in the third tier. I mean, the thing here is you could theoretically win the Champions League with a club that's not in Europe. It's a huge challenge. And it's a long way to go from the third tier of Spain. But yeah, in theory, that could happen. You've got Spanish sides coming from Spain, having to cross the Mediterranean over to, well, the borders of Morocco to um, play football. And you've got to make that trip across to Spain as well. So yeah, it's an interesting one, that one. I had no idea about it until I watched a video on it. But yeah, Theuta and Melilla play on North Africa and, you know, take trips over to Europe. And number 19, probably the ultimate football manager challenge. It's a Liechtenstein legacy. And the ultimate football manager challenge is to win the Champions League with this side. FC Vardas. Now Vardas play in the Swiss Challenge League, Switzerland's second division. They're actually situated in Liechtenstein. It's a micro state between Switzerland and Austria. And they play in the Swiss League because Liechtenstein has no recognised league. All their clubs play in the Swiss League system. But however, Liechtenstein does have a cup. And because Vardas can't qualify for the European Cups through the Swiss League system, this is their only way into European football, the Liechtenstein Cup. So what that means is the only way for Vardas or any Liechtenstein club to qualify for Europe is by winning the cup and entering the early stages of a European Conference League qualifying. I think they will enter with the second qualifying round at the start of the game. Of course, there's only one winner of the Liechtenstein Cup, so there's only ever going to be one club from Liechtenstein in Europe. So it's impossible to rise up the coefficients. So the only way you can get Ivados into the Europa League is by winning the whole Europa Conference League from qualifying. And likewise, the only way of entering the Champions League is by winning the Europa League. So this is the big challenge, right? 
To win the Champions League with Rodgers, you have to first win the Liechtenstein Cup, then go all the way through Europa Conference League qualifying and win the whole thing. The following season, you enter the Europa League, you have to win that. And then the following season after that, you enter the Champions League because you won the Europa League and then you win that. And you know what? If someone can achieve that with Rodgers, if anyone's done that, SI should just give them football manager for free for life because that is a massive challenge. If you're going to have a go at that, I wish you luck. Now, like I said, we've been in Europe quite a lot. Let's go to Africa. Number 20 is an African adventure. Now, Africa gets a bit of a bad deal in Football Manager in that the only playable nation in the continent is South Africa. That's it. So yeah, you've got the option to take charge of one of Bafana Bafana's clubs, Kaiser Chiefs, Orlando Pirates, Sundowns, many others. But because Africa gets such a bad deal in that South Africa is the only nation you can play as, if you're going to really take in the whole of Africa, how about you do a national team save? And yes, I know that international management on FM is not really well liked and I don't really know what it's like on this game either. But, you know, if you're going to take in Africa, this might be the way to do it. Because Morocco became the first African national team to make the World Cup semi-finals in 2022. Dream run they had. Dream run. So the challenge with the African adventure is win the World Cup with an African team for the first time. So you could go for one of those experienced sides, Ghana or the Black Stars or another option, Morocco are actually co-hosting the World Cup in 2030. There's a number of sides that have just missed out on their first World Cup, Mali are an example, they've never qualified for the World Cup, although they have come close. And then you've got the Democratic Republic of the Congo, who haven't qualified for the World Cup since they were called Zaire. You could go even lower, you could go for an African underdog such as Djibouti, or an island nation like the Seychelles or Madagascar, start an African journeyman, work your way to the top, an international journeyman. You know, so many possibilities for African football, South Africa if you want league football or take charge of any nation in Africa, try and become the first African nation to win the World Cup. Now I did kind of mention it earlier, the brand new playable nation, we've talked about Gibraltar, let's talk about the other one, number 21, big in Japan. Yes, the J-League makes its debut in FM24 at last and the game available in Japanese for the first time too. Amazing. So I guess this save is if you want to check out the Japanese league system. And there's three leagues in Japan as well. It's not just the top league, it's three leagues. It's amazing. So you could go straight to the top. You could go for the champions, Yokohama Marinos, and, you know, get them to be like the best club in Asia. You could also go for Vissel Kobe. Andres Iniesta plays for them or played for them and Juan Mata as well. But, but like I said, you've got three leagues to play with as well. You could go to the J2 league, go for Jubilu Iwata. Or you could go down to the J3 league, you could go for Athol Claro Numazu. I don't know why they've got Spanish in their name, but predicted to finish 20th in Japan. Kamatamare Sanuki, media prediction of bottom. You could start from the bottom of Japan, work your way up. So many options, but the fact that you've got three new playable leagues in Asia is really cool. So if you want to have a look at that, then you can do that. Three more ideas. These ones aren't really directed at certain clubs but more ideas for any club number 22 is time travel so we've got this unemployed man so i've got this unemployed manager here i've got a number of leagues loaded one thing we can do is go on holiday and you could go on holiday indefinitely you could take a week's holiday a month's holiday a year's holiday that's a great feature of fm so how about this start unemployed Holiday into the future, as far as you like. You could go 10 years in the future, 20 years, even 100 years into the future. Because after about 20, 25 years, all the real players will have all retired. And you'll have a database that is entirely just new gen players. So here's the idea. Travel into the future, 25 years maybe. So all the real players have all retired and all the new gens are in. Take charge of the Premier League club, which has fallen the furthest. Say, for example, Everton a non-league. Sorry Everton fans, I picked on you, but I'm a Liverpool fan, so there you go. Uh, so that's the idea. Our last two are very standard journeyman saves. So number 23 is local to global, which I did a couple of years ago. And this is a pretty standard journeyman save, but you start at the club closest to you that you can play as. So in my case, this would be Tunbridge Angels because they're only about a 15 minute drive away from where I live. They're in the National League South, so you can play as them on FM. This is the idea, you start at your local club, you go from job to job, you get your coaching badges along the way, you could travel the world, you could stay in England, do whatever you want, start with zero coaching badges, earn them on the way, gain your UEFA alliances and then start as an unknown manager and then mix with the cream of European crop. So that's local to global, number 23, number 24, very similar, but it's an unemployed journeyman. The only change here is you start unemployed, apply for whatever jobs you can around the world. 
I mean, we've just started the save on the 31st of July. I'm an unemployed manager. We can look at the job center. And, you know, just with the leagues that I've loaded, you've got Basel, you've got Murthia, Kelty Hearts. If you've got a strong PC, you could load every league and you can find yourself in the middle of nowhere. I mean, just look at the amount of leagues you can play as in Europe. Like, you start in a point. You could end up in the Slovakian second division. You could end up absolutely anywhere, like Slovenia, Hungary, Iceland, Czechia, Croatia. You know, load whatever leagues you want and just start anywhere. Because that's the best thing about FM sometimes is growing those attachments to those lesser known clubs. You know, local to global, you're starting at your local club. So at least you kind of know what's going on. But you work your way from job to job in either way and become one of the best managers in the world. So there you go. 24 save ideas for FM24. And there's loads more out there as well. You know, don't just take this video. There's probably loads of other ideas. And these are all playable with the default database as well. There's lots of custom databases and things that you can do to unlock more nations and lower leagues like there'd be like level 10 databases in england we can go down to tier 10 so many possibilities and these are 24 for this game so if you like this video and if you you know feel like taking charge of one of these saves and taking one of these challenges drop a like on the video that would be appreciated leave comments and let me know if you are going to take on one of these saves let me know how you get on wish you all the best of luck if you haven't done so already or if you're new, do subscribe and turn notifications on. I've got some ideas floating around for future Football Manager video ideas, not just saves. Uh, I'm doing something in my own time which is pretty nuts, but we're going to stick with it. So in terms of future videos for FM24, I've got some ideas, not necessarily let's play videos in terms of, you know, just me managing my team and playing my game. I want to do something a bit different this year. So I've got some ideas floating around and, you know, stay tuned for those. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.